This is a Seashine SCV1 double lithium ion 9 volt battery charger that I got off of eBay um, for about 15 20 euros there about, and uh, I just figured we'd have a quick look inside it uh, before I put it to use to judge whether or not I dare actually touch it while it's connected to the grid. So, not going to touch the batteries, these seem to be relatively good actually, they are stuffed full of lithium batteries, they're not full of air like some other lithium ions I've got, so that seems positive. But uh, we're going to have a look at the charger itself. Uh, so I've already taken it apart. The plastic case is of uh, actually quite high quality. I was very surprised. It uh, snaps together quite nicely and attached with two screws and it really feels sturdy and nice. I, I really like this. So. Here are the guts of the uh, charger itself, and uh, on the top it's a quite sparse board uh, with a notable uh, isolation gap between the primary and secondary there, and uh, and also quite notably there are no filtering components at all. Uh, good thing, less things to go wrong, bad thing, gonna put out more crap on both the grid and into the air. So if we swap it around to the other side, uh, we are greeted with a quite lovely sight. Because as far as the board is concerned, the primary to secondary insulation is just uh, about as good as you can get it really. It's very widely split, there are no rogue traces going around, uh, nothing which could really pose a hazard. So uh, the only thing left uh, to be questioning is uh, the inside of this transformer. but. Uh, it totally doesn't look too bad, but these transformers never look bad. You can just see some single insulated wire going around there, so that's hopefully the secondary. Uh, build quality wires, capacitors, uh, primary side 400 volts, 6.8 microfarad, generic Chinese brand, it's a JYCDR. And we've got a Cheng X uh, on the secondary, 470 microfarad, 25 volts, so nothing wrong with the voltage rating. As far as the electronics are concerned, uh, it seems to be a secondary side switching converter as well, and it do we even have two separate uh, channels for the different batteries? Yes, we do. The two current to shunt resistors are a dead giveaway, so we actually have two separate chargers in this, hence why they've got the secondary switching as well. So we've probably got to the primary side switcher being roughly unregulated, taking it down to something like 12 volts verabate and then this stuff doing the rest. And the chip is ha, absolutely unmarked. There is not a trace of text on that chip. Nothing. It's not even etched away, it's just a blank chip. So it's clearly, uh, you can probably figure it out from a pin out, but I wager it's just some run of a mill microcontroller or switch mode power supply IC. I'm not going to dig into it. But yeah, this thing really looks to be safe to use. The model is SCV1, dated uh, 2014 11.06, version 3.1 and it's designed by XUGD. So good on you, XUGD, you seem to have done an excellent job on this. Beside the uh, charger, the, I did get it uh, with a mains lead, which it seems to pass the... Uh, kind of passes the rip test, I can feel it stretching. If I force a bit hard, perhaps it'll... Yep. Yeah. yeah, I that's a failed rip test. None of these cords should ever do that. Uh copper wise. This does not feel like copper. Yeah, I'm pretty certain this is not copper. It seems to be roughly 0 0.5 square millimeters, but definitely CZA or just some kind of iron thing which the Chinese love ever so much. Is it magnetic? No, it doesn't seem to be magnetic, so it might be uh, just uh, plain old CCA. So, 
Uh, well, that's not entirely suitable for a flexing main cord, I suppose. It's better than iron. Uh, the actual insulation, although not too durable, seems to be thick enough. I mean, you've got a fair amount of plastic going there. Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Uh, one of these American plugs, yeah. Are you supposed to be able to do this on American plugs? Or do the better ones just kind of stick together better? I don't know, I've never had a quality American plug, but the Chinese ones always do this. Yeah, that'll break off soon enough. Uh, the other end of the cord, uh, that actually seems to be some kind of brass contacts in there. Looking not too bad. Uh, the brand of the cable is nowhere to be found, but it does, it seems to quite accurately state uh, 2 times 0.5 square millimeters, so good on them. Not too bad, not too bad at all. I've certainly seen worse Chinese mains cords, and above all, I've seen lots worse Chinese chargers. I actually am relatively confident in touching this thing while it's connected to the grid. So, let's hope so Shine keeps it up. Yep, we've definitely got two separate channels because that one's done. It seems to top out at 8.33 volts. And that one is still charging. Screw it, let's just take one of the batteries apart as well. And so that's what we do on this channel. I'm sure somebody's going to accuse me of copying Big Clive again. Oh, that's pretty well enclosed, it seems. So the top pops off rather than the bottom. Oh, there you saw some believably 650 milliamp hour lithium. Polymer cells. A little protection board on top of. There's definitely some circuitry going on. Yeah, you can just about make out a couple of ICs there. And some pretty beefy traces going up to the terminals. And if we tip that aside, we can just about make out the LP210120. Nothing really too exciting on the other side. I don't think I'm going to try popping this. Nah, I'm going to leave it at that. But, but there's a probably working protection circuit under there. It's, there's way too much circuitry there for it to be, just be some kind of stupid dud. So this is probably going to turn off if the cells go unbalanced or you overcharge it or you over discharge and so forth. Everything that you'd want there to be little two cell lithium. There you go. Sea shine seem to be quite reputable. And just for kicks, let's compare it to this really crap uh, EBL uh, 600 milliamp hour 9 volt lithium that I got in quite some time back. And these have been awful, but they just uh, do not work properly. One of them, I got four, one of them was dead out of a box, another one had stupid low capacity, and uh, two of them worked. Uh, but, yeah, yeah, they haven't been particularly impressive. They, they last about not even as long as a normal 9 volt battery, so the capacity is pathetic, and they feel... They are lighter than the Sunshines. They are lighter, so let's see what we've got. They probably come apart reasonably similarly. Yep, we've definitely got a little sealy lip type thing around the top, just like on the Sunshine. Yep. Oh. Where? Oh, the, yeah, there is a protection board in this. Uh, the cells, actually. Mm. Are they slightly less wide? Yeah, they're slightly thinner, seem to be about the same thickness as the Sunshine, but they're definitely smaller cells. No question smaller cells and probably of quite bad quality. This one was for when I was using the example <laughs> and it was charging at about 8 volts but then it cut out because uh, the protection circuit kicked in. So this one's got very uneven cells and I think several of the other ones do too. Other cell coming there. Let's just measure the voltage on both cells to try and figure out what's gone wrong. 
So one cell is 3.7 and the other 4.13, 4.14. Yep. So these are just very uneven. But we do have a protection board in there. It's labelled DBK 9 volts version 1.1. The protection board actually looks relatively decent. We've got the proper IC van, probably a little double transistor to kill whatever might need killing. So at least EBL got the protection right because they certainly need it. And just for fun, let's see what the cell voltages of the SoShine is. I just got these today, I charged them up until the charger considered them to be full. So this one, 4.15, the other one, 4.17. Yep, so the SoShine definitely had has an edge. Anyway, I'm going to rain better because I actually already started importing this video. This was so impromptu. Cheerio! World Wild Voltage! The product has applied for patent. Get on, you product.